This is the TCL Next Paper. It's finally here. Or is it? Well, this isn't the TCL Next Paper, this is the TCL Next Paper. You see, what it is is that TCL Next Paper was announced as an alternative to ePaper, and it was on course to being the first replacement for ePaper since the Kyobo Mirasol 10 years ago as being a production ready, purchasable product. You see, this isn't the TCL Next Paper, this is actually the TCL Next Paper. You see, the TCL Next Paper is the Next Paper, and this one is the TCL Next Paper that is, okay, you know what, that's just too confusing. So let's break it down like this. When TCL Next Paper announced that they were releasing this technology, it was in the form of an 8 inch that never actually came out. So they released this one, which is a 10S, and it has the exact same name, TCL Next Paper, without having any of the technology on board at all. This is just a LCD LED tablet. It doesn't have any e-paper properties, doesn't have any e-paper function, and it is basically the same technology as every single other tablet in the industry. So why did they not call it something different? Well, we have no idea because it doesn't make any sense. They're calling it the exact same thing that was so hyped up. So it kind of feels cheapened that they would just go with an LCD screen. But they're promoting some impressive things. On their website, they say it is a paper-like display. Well, we can tell you it isn't. It looks like an LCD screen. Although they do say it has anti-glare, so you can see it at any angle. And we would say that's pretty accurate. This thing is remarkably beautiful at virtually any angle. It says it has anti-blue ray, which means it goes easy on the eyes for long screen viewing. I suppose there could be some technology in there with that. And it also says no yellowing. So a lot of the time when you have hardware driven eye protection, it changes the colors of the screen, either making them more yellow, more orange, etc. This one doesn't actually affect the screen's colors, which I can tell you is pretty accurate as it is quite beautiful. Outside of that, it's just a tablet. It has Android 11, a 10.1 inch screen, 1920 by 1200 pixels with FHD, which just means full HD, aka not 720p. And more importantly on this is that it has an 8000 milliamp battery, which is an absolutely monstrous battery size. And the whole device only weighs 490 grams, and it comes in two colors. Let's check out the stylus pen. In fact, it's not that great of a pen. The pen itself is completely hollow. It doesn't offer that much of a kind of really nice in your hand feel. It is triangular, which does help. The tips are not removable. It's just kind of some blunt piece of plastic with an aluminum build. And there's no eraser capabilities or buttons of any kind. It doesn't need charging, but on the screen itself, it doesn't actually offer any sort of paper-like feel as it's just this kind of hollow piece of aluminum stick that you're scrubbing on a piece of glass. So in terms of writing feel, it's really far off from feeling natural or anything like paper. Furthermore, moving into the device itself, the pen doesn't stick to the side and it doesn't charge or have any magnetic capabilities whatsoever. Because aluminum is a non-ferrous metal, it's not magnetic, so it doesn't stick anywhere. And there's no magnets kind of even under the aluminum skin with any sort of iron properties. So this is the UI. You can just think of it as the most latest kind of version of Android. You have your drop down up top with your overall brightness setting and you do have your main screen of apps. You can long press on the middle and do different things like wallpapers, themes, widgets, home settings, etc. If you want to move something around like Google Play, just long press that, move it around to wherever you want and plop it right down. It is going to be just standard Android because they aren't really doing anything to really make it their own. So it is just everything in the settings as you can see right here, privacy accounts, set up your Google account back here, and they do have some display things at the back here. Now one of the things you saw from the beginning of the video is the overall anti-yellowing. I can tell you that if you have the color temperature all the way up, it will be quite yellow. In fact, it's very yellow. 
as you turn that down it's going to become quite blue and white and extreme so you can kind of find a middle ground plomp it right about there and away you go alternatively you can turn it off altogether and not have that issue whatsoever but try to find a middle ground for your own liking so you can ease your eyes like around there but not really reduce the overall colors too much so that the point is lost of whatever you're trying to consume. Pressing the home button brings you back home in which case you have a bunch of preloaded stuff Google Maps, YouTube, Gmail, a bunch of Google services as per usual. Google Play is fully functional on this device which means you can browse Google Play and do whatever you want and download whatever you want. There really is no limitations outside of just storage basically. This has all the battery power to last during your kind of high-end games and it has all the processing power to play basically anything you can potentially think of downloading from Google Play itself. There's a lot of things to say about reading and it is all going to come down to the exact catered experience you're going to make for yourself. The color temperature on or off, physical page turn animations off or on, I mean it's really just going to come down to whatever you want it to be. This is typically what it's going to look like. It's just going to be LCD, black on white. It is going to strain your eyes long term. It is going to be easier on your eyes because of a couple things they've implemented into this device to make it easier for you, but for the most part, staring at an LCD LED screen for long periods of time is going to affect your eyes. I mean, that's pretty much why e-readers exist the way they are and why e-paper is being implemented into many use case scenarios. Once you do have your app open, you can do things like color highlights, translations, copies, search the web, and definitions down below. And as you may or may not be aware, the beauty about LCD LED tablets is that it's always ready. You can see how smooth it is compared to e-paper. It's because this is flashing anywhere between 24 to 120 times a second. Your eyes just can't catch it because it's flickering so quickly. So that's really why LCD tablets are always ready and roaring ready to go because they are. It's, it's always prepared. For a change state, like a page turn, on an e-paper device, it's going to be noticeable. You'll get flashing, you'll get ghosting. You don't get any of that on an LCD screen, although for the most part, depending on the device, you have to charge it every day, it strains your eyes. It just, it's not as good to read black and white things. In fact, if it is a black and white piece of media, you would be better off going with an e-paper device. However, all of that changes when you get into something with color like a PDF. This is our benchmark PDF and you will see that for today it looks a little bit different. Why is that? Because it's smooth, it's colorful, it's popping, it's vibrant. We can finally see what color uniform the guy's wearing. And this is because, of course, it's an LCD device, therefore you can see what is exactly supposed to be displayed to you and you can consume it in the way it was meant to be. Again, you're going to have drawbacks like battery consumption, eye strain, all that kind of stuff, but for the most part, color, you can't go wrong on a device like this. I mean, it's current, it's fast, it has the processing power, it has the RAM, you're not going to have any issues displaying what you want. Pinch and zoom issues are a thing of the past. You can change the orientation by just rotating it like this and completely change the outlook of your device. It really is just incomparable when it comes to displaying colors so you really just have to ask yourself what you're buying the device for. Now we're getting into the segment where we kind of excel at and the level of relevancy in this video is note taking. To be completely honest on an LCD LED screen the biggest thing is latency which means how fast something is and this isn't that fast. We have seen ebook readers and e-notes that are significantly faster than this. In fact, this is kind of on the slower end. You can see it doesn't really match where my line is at any given time. And there's no pressure sensitivity because this has no Wacom capabilities or even active capacitive to the point where it even allows you to do 4,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. So in that regard, it's actually a little bit underperforming. You can basically go as fast as you want here, which e-ink will never be able to measure up to. But we feel like if this did have some sort of Wacom on board, it would change the game a little bit because this isn't the fastest experience we've felt on a note-taking centric device. Is this a note-taking centric device? Yes and no. 
Is it an e-note? Not really, but they give you a dedicated stylus. This was in the box. It says TCL and it's for this unit. Therefore, the expectation is there that you are going to do note taking on this device. Is it fast? It's okay. Is it a good feeling? No, not at all. It doesn't feel like paper and it's, again, that hollow lightweight pen on a piece of glass with a matte screen protector. It's just not that great of an experience. Although the beauty is, is that this level of speed and this level of functionality will exist across any app. You can download Sketch, you can download Paint, you can download any sort of note-taking app, any sort of handwriting app, and it's going to be the same. Whereas on e-readers, really you only have the stock app and anything you want to download after that doesn't really work that great. As you draw, there's little dots, the latency increases, the speed decreases, etc. So there's a lot of advantages to an LCD screen, but in terms of a note-taking experience, the level of authenticity this gives you is nowhere near realistic. There's the peaches. A little thank you gift. So we dropped it off in the car carrier, and here it is. Um, yeah, typically they need to, like he could have towed it, but he has one of these at his lot. So, so uh, yeah, it was just easier for them to drive it over here. So in the end, are we disappointed? Well, if the TCL Next Paper technology that was so hyped up never existed, this as a standalone would be fantastic. But to be under the same company and release the exact same character for character word description of your product being the thing that wasn't what you hyped up was a little bit sneaky. And this definitely does cheapen the overall aura and stigma around Next Paper as the 8 failed to release and this one is just a tablet. So what is going to happen with the TCL Next Paper, the true e-ink alternative, e-paper alternative technology, we have absolutely no idea as their company direction seems to be a little bit askew at the current point in time. For GoodyReader.com, this is Peter.